It's the L.A. Football Podcast. Touchdown Ram! Recovered by the Chargers. Touchdown UCLA! With USC great and NFL stud, Frosty Rucker. The Trojans back in front. And LAFB founder, Ryan Zyrood. On the Believe Podcast Network and LAFBnetwork.com. This is your destination for Los Angeles football. What's up, Los Angeles? Welcome back to the Believe in LA Football podcast with your hosts, Frosty Rucker, and I am Ryan Dyer. We are on the Believe Podcast Network, also on LAFBnetwork.com, your destination for Los Angeles football. Got a great, great show for you today. Frosty, what's going on, man? Yeah, man, not too much. Just trying to stay out the heat, man. It's starting to heat up outside. You know, it was so nice beginning of this week and like the high 70s all week and then now we're getting back to the hundreds Not yeah it's coming it's coming it's coming and hopefully it'll cool down after that what are we i don't even know what month we're in september yeah we got football soon so it's always funny and you know this growing up here and playing football here everyone talks about the the fall football weather we never really get that in los angeles you don't get the fall football you don't get the breeze and all that yeah you don't get that yeah our hottest months are like september and october half the time but true i remember yeah. Anyway, got a great show. Uh, Dr. Nima Maron is going to come on, one of Frosty's old buddies, but he's been all around sports, had some time with the Lakers and among other teams. We have him on to break down some of uh, the injuries we've seen, unfortunately, the, the meniscus tear of Derwin James and Trayvon Howard. So we'll have him on, plus tell some cool stories. Uh, has a little Kobe story for those Laker fans out there. So stay tuned for that. But first, Frosty, tomorrow, Saturday, is an unfortunate day for not only organizations, but mainly these players, especially during a COVID season with no preseason. It's the roster cut day as these teams get down to 53 guys. First off, let me ask you this, because I think you played through both. The NFL used to be a few more years ago where it was like a, it was segmented, right? Like you start with 90 guys, you do like 10 cuts by first week of preseason. I can't remember the numbers I'm making them up, but it it was segmented. Then they went to it basically – Everyone can stay, and you cut everyone in the final day. So first question to you, what did you prefer as a player? I mean, you were probably always pretty safe, but what did you well, <laughs> Man, that's funny you say that. No, <laughs> so, so one thing that, you know, being a player, being on locker room during that time, it's a, it's a terrible day, right? Mm-hmm. You, you got a few years back, um, old CBA, I would say, where they kept a lot of guys to the last game, but you said a preseason game. Mm-hmm. This year, there's no preseason games. So, you know, sometimes you don't want your starters or backups, even backups that are going to make the team play in that last game. But when the last CBA came, they condensed the numbers so much that, you know, they cut everyone right before the season was going to start and they still had to play in that last preseason game. And some guys didn't have backups. So Mm -hmm. it was completely unsafe. And, you know, I didn't like that to see guys out there. You know, it's been me in my career, beginning of my career as a young rookie, second and third year player. You know, those are the fourth quarter games where is where you make your, your money is where you get on the team because um, you're getting the bulk of reps and, you know, practice. Yeah. But, you know, it, it brings me to this year, though, how tough it is that they never got an audition tape. You yeah. know, practice was just an audition, never under the lights, and a lot of guys are going to get asked. And, you know, it's a difficult time. You've been training so hard for this opportunity. And then when you don't make it or you don't uh, achieve that goal, you know, everything comes into play, you know, that you get a little depressed and, you know, did I not work hard enough? You, you sacrifice so much, but then people don't believe in you, but this is a time when you believe in yourself. Absolutely. And, and this season even more so than others because yeah. of everything going on, all these guys getting cut, a lot of them are going to just end up on different rosters. The practice squad has been extended by, I believe six players. I think it's a 16 person which practice squad as opposed to 10, which is good. But then all season, there's going to be guys going on the IR with this COVID list, or not the IR necessarily, but this COVID list, which is a three-week Hopefully list. Not. There's going to be a lot of players kind of that can be picked up. So you got to stay ready. How, how do you stay mentally? Again, not really that you had to go through this, but I'm sure you had friends, had buddies do it. How do you stay mentally focused when you do have arguably one of the worst days in your career getting cut? Yeah, and, that, and that's the hardest part. I've been cut one time in my life, and it, was, it happened in the offseason in Cleveland, I signed a big five-year contract and um, it's a tough thing to swallow because usually you're the best on your team. You've always been, uh, you've never been denied access to playing. Right. And for me, it was like, so I'm getting cut from Cleveland. <laughs> and like, that really says a lot about my game. If, you know, we didn't even win a lot of games, yeah. you know, so it's, it's a humbling experience. If anything, uh, hopefully you got a good family and support around you. 
um, to get you through it and, you know, seek counsel, but just keep working. You know, if this is the ultimate goal that you want to get to, this is your dream job. You just got to get back in the lab. You got to get back in the weight room, get back uh, to lifting and doing what you got to do. But it's definitely tough. It's a tough thing and it's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, for sure. Well, and you obviously took that, everything you just said, because you turned that getting cut into what, seven more years on the big stage. So yeah, absolutely. All right, which is what these kids need to do. So um, next week, we'll definitely get into all the, the big cuts, any surprises. Um, announced today, the Rams did select their kicker. I know we were talking kicks a little bit. Sam right, Silver. right, right. Yeah, the seventh round pick is the guy that made the cut. I know a lot of fans not pumped on that because he actually, in their like kicking competitions, he the worst out of the three. But usually when you spend draft capital on a guy, um, you end up uh, sticking on to him and he's younger and stuff like that. So Sam Sloman will be the Rams kicker. Um, yeah. Frosty, next week we'll get into all the, uh, the big cuts, any surprise moves, and we can talk more about um, what that will look like. So, um, Absolutely. We'll be, we'll be gearing up for the NFL kickoff weekend. That's right. Sunday, Chargers in the afternoon, and the Rams on Sunday night football hosting the Cowboys. I, I can't believe we're a week away. Double, hit, double header. So are we going to just be on all day? What are we doing? I, yeah, I think so. we got to be Do somewhere. we have a beer sponsor? We're, we're working on one. We should, okay. have it, we should legit have it by – game day any of you guys out there they got some uh, local uh beers send them our way we drink the Coors Light we drink all that but if you got something that you brewed yourself let us know yeah I'll take a growler there you go of course you will yeah and we'll, we'll put it on the air so speaking of sponsors got to talk about the sponsor for this show which is bet online got the playoffs going on with NBA NHL and we got the MLB coming up on the playoffs. NFL, as we just mentioned, is starting as a week. So make sure to take full advantage of sports being back and get in on the action with hundreds of odds, features, and props to let you bet on. There's always the online casino if for some reason you don't want to bet on sports. So head to betonline.ag today and sign up to receive your welcome bonus on your first deposit. Again, that's betonline.ag and sign up today. So, Frost, without further ado, unless you got something else to add, uh, I think we can just get into this interview with uh, the great doctor, the good doctor. Yeah, let's get it on. Let's bring Dr. Nima Maron onto the show. <laughs> well, today we got a special guest, one of my dear friends, Dr. Nima Maron. And um, he's come to join us today to talk about a few injuries. Uh, great guy. Doc, what's going on, man? What's good? what's good with you, brother? It's great seeing your face again, Frost. Always, man, always. So, Ryan, you can chime in anytime you want. He's a good friend. He's normal. Don't let the doctor <laughs> part fool you. Smarter than me, that's for sure. Much smarter than me. <laughs> Probably doubtful. Nima, I was, a, I was a recreation and leisure studies major, so you're for sure a lot smarter than me. <laughs> I had a Van Wilder degree. So, but Frost, um, go ahead. Lead us off. Doc, I'm going to jump right into this. We got two major injuries in L.A. that affect both our teams that we cover. We got Duran James that we cover for the Los Angeles Chargers uh, with a meniscus tear. And we got Traven Howard for the Rams with the exact same injury. So probably easy for you to break down. Um, but yeah, I'm curious, just right off the bat, for people that don't know, really, I'm not a doctor, I really know either. What even is a meniscus tear? I know it's in the knee, but just if you can go into what that actual injury is, and then we can talk after about the repair and how to actually, you know, the comeback for these players. Absolutely. So the meniscus is the cushion in between our knee, in between our thigh bone, the femur, and our shin bone, the tibia. That cushion is basically a shock absorber. Um, it prevents any kind of stress loading at one point. It distributes the stress. So by having a good solid cushion, it decreases your risk of having, you know, progressive arthritis and damage to your cartilage. If you lose that cushion and it's not doing that shock absorption anymore, you can get a breakdown of your cartilage and degenerative changes in your knee, meaning the cartilage, you know, being ruined and developing arthritis. <clears throat> that cushion normally there's two of them. There's one on the medial side, on the inner side of the knee, and one on the lateral side, on the outer side of the knee. So uh, everybody has two cushions in, in each knee, so four total cushions. And um, the, the basic idea is, is that if, if someone does have a tear, we have two options. We can either repair it or do a partial meniscectomy if they require surgery. A lot of meniscus tears generally don't require any surgery at all. So which ones do require surgery, right? That's the, that's the main question. The, the ones that require surgery are ones that either cause mechanical symptoms, such as locking or catching. So that's when the meniscus tears enough to even shift in between your thigh bone and your shin bone, and it gets stuck. So when the knee tries to straighten, that meniscus shifts, and it gets stuck between the joint, and a person can't actually straighten their knee 
as much as the other side. And that's problematic because if they have that mechanical symptom, too painful to play, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to miss time and they actually don't have as much normal range of motion. So that requires surgery. Yeah, Doc, I got a question for you. So obviously I've been in an NFL locker room and I've um, you know, been around lots of friends that have come into that same injury with a meniscus and they do say that it locks or whatnot. Um, me and Ryan been going back and forth. We're not really back and forth, but we've had been in discussion about it. Do you think for a guy like Derwin James is the body mass or do you think it's uh, arthritic like you just described? So you mean why he got injured originally? Correct. We weren't there. We don't know the play. You can yeah, yeah, yeah. get injured anyway. But Is he too think... big maybe for those shock absorbers like you were saying? So that's a very fair point. So basically the knee sees five to 10 times your body weight. So when you're jumping, it's closer to that 10. When you're you know, walking, it's closer to five. So let's say he's 50 pounds over his ideal body weight, plus 250 to 500 extra pounds of weight on that knee joint. So it's gonna, it, his weight is going to drastically impact how easy it is for him to tear it because his knee's not used to that, that kind of weight or force. And so the bigger problem is, is let's say he actually has surgery and he has to have, or he did, he has to have a partial meniscectomy and they remove a part of it because it's not a repairable injury. Well, now he has less meniscus. And with that same weight, he's going to have greater degenerative changes and arthritic changes in the future because he has less protection for that same amount of weight. That's my point, Ryan, that we were talking about. I think that he has to go back into the lab after he gets his surgery and he goes through the rehab uh, process. But with his trainers, they got to have a, a, a very clear um, di direction of how they're going to get him back on the field. And that has to be if he's going to cut body mass, if it's weight, because um, he's a big guy playing safety, coming downhill. He can do it all, right? But careers fizzle out if you don't get that stuff right. And that's the stuff that people don't know. You got to go in the lab and find out what's just right for you to keep you on the field. Yeah, exactly. And, and Doc, you kind of already answered it, but just to kind of reiterate this injury specifically, and then, you know, I'm, I don't know anything about injuries to send, but you, you hear like Tommy John surgery in baseball. Mm -hmm. A lot of those guys that get that, at least they say, I could be wrong, but they say they almost come back stronger after that repair because it, the throwing motion, it out almost benefits them. This injury is not one of those. It's automatically you're dropping down tier by tier every time you injure it, correct? Well, so it's a little bit different, yeah, uh, because, again, that cushion is protecting you from getting arthritis. So there is some evidence that shows that your career can be cut shorter in length in your longevity by having a meniscus tear, particularly if it's removed and not repaired. Um, so, yeah, that could definitely change your career length. However, when, you're, when your meniscus tear is partially removed, and let's say you only lost 10%, and you got a partial removal, a partial meniscectomy, it's known as. You know, a lot of these athletes, like Russell Westbrook, got back in the playoffs for like four weeks. They can get back in a four to six week time range with a partial mm -hmm. meniscectomy or a removal. So oftentimes these athletes are actually hoping that they just have a, 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 you know, a cleanup, as they call it, because they're hoping to get back sooner. Because if they repair it, their limitations, it's really a six month recovery, like you see, like Zion. It's a six month recovery, and they can miss a half a whole season. And that's drastic for their career and their earning potential. So even though it's not the best thing for their knee longevity wise in their future, a lot of athletes are hoping to get a cleanup so they can get back on the field or the court in four to six weeks instead of, you know, four to six months. So doc, I have a question that cause you use the phrase um, a cleanup. Is that between doctor and patient or doctor and athlete then to, to see, well, I'll just take a cleanup if I can get right back or it's going to take a longer period of time in a, a complete. Uh, if they do the repair. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a great question. So I don't know a single doctor out there that if they can repair the meniscus, they will ever recommend to an athlete, hey, let me just take out half your meniscus so I can get you back faster. They won't do that. Mm -hmm. um, now, the, the decision really comes down to um, is the, the type of tear, the tear pattern. If the tear is torn, kind of like the video we're going to show you here, where in the back of the meniscus, the meniscus is really a C shape in the posterior horn in this video in the back section, I'm yanking on it and I'm pulling on it with a probe and you kind of see as, as that tear moves forward, it's displacing between the end of the thigh bone and the shin bone and that causes that locking sensation. That tear is in the back third of the C. It's in that back portion where the blood vessels are good. There's, the meniscus gets um, blood flow to 10 to 20 to 25% of the meniscus and it's in the peripheral, the outer edge. So when it's in the far back section, we put sutures in it, we can repair it. It has an 80% success rate of healing. Docs are going to want to repair that. They just say, hey, sit out this half season or you know, take the six-month recovery. Let's get you back because you're going to have many more seasons in the future. 
But if it's not in that outer third, and it's on the inner part of the third, like on this video that we're gonna show here, and it's a radial tear going perpendicular to the body of the, of the meniscus. Now that type of tear, you just gotta clean up the edges because what the problem is, is you really can't repair it or the repair isn't successful. And so in that case, the tear pattern says, hey, do a partial meniscectomy, and he luckily will have a quicker recovery. But the tear pattern defines mm -hmm. the surgery. That's crazy. And it, we'll get into more of your background so all of our listeners know exactly how much you've done in this field. But I'm curious, and don't have to divulge names or anything, but have you ever had an organization or someone higher up making, like a team's making a playoff run and saying, hey, we just need this guy back. It's probably better longevity to do this, but hey, we just want him on the, on the court, on the field. Have you ever had anyone come to you or no, everyone's been pretty like, whatever's best for the athlete is what we want? So that's, that's a great question. So actually in my, in my experience, you know, I, at these times I was always the assistant doc or helping the, you know, the head doc or whatnot. But in, in, in my experience with these teams, I've never been with an organization where they were forcing the player back too soon and they wouldn't listen to the doc. Most of these organizations, and you know, they're quality organizations I was lucky enough to be a part of, but they see the value in this athlete. They want him for years. They don't want him to come, to come back and have a three or four season career. They want that, that frosty rucker you know, yeah, more than buddy. a decade career. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, you know how and, refreshing this is to hear? Yeah, you know, really, you it's know, true. Because, you know, as an athlete, you get nervous and you get scared every time you got to see the team dog because you don't know if they have another agenda. Is it they have to respond to the GM, the ownership, or is it to you, your agent, who's the loyalty to? Because most yeah. of these team dogs, especially in football, they're not even in the union or whatnot. They're contracted, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's like you put all your eggs in one basket. Do you get your surgery with the team doctors? where they may just be forcing you, rushing you to do something? Or do you go seek help, uh, a professional off, I would say off campus, but yeah. you know, out of the, out of an organization to go take care of your needs. It's a tough one for athletes. I'll tell you that. No, it's a tough one for athletes. And you know, I've been lucky enough to have a lot of uh, friends who are professional athletes like yourself and, you know, been, been involved in some of their medical health. And what I always tell all of them is why not get two or three opinions? As, as an athlete in the NFL or the NBA or any organization, you have workers' compensation. You can go to any doctor you want, right? So if you have a great relationship with that team doctor and you really trust him, that's a great situation. It's at home. You take, he takes care of business and, and you stay there. He or she takes care of business and you stay there. But if you're a little bit worried or you don't like the opinion or you want to hear a second opinion to match it before you make your decision, go out there and, and, and try someone else out. Get another opinion that's not associated. But to be honest with you, man, the, the people that are involved with team sports, in my experience with the NBA, Major League Baseball, the NFL, even the NHL, all, all the teams that I've, I've dealt with, they're phenomenal doctors. Like these guys, they care. I remember Dr. Elitrosh, one of my mentors, one time someone calling him, and I'm just overhearing this on, in another room, and he said to the person, I don't even know who he was talking to on the phone, I have so much integrity, I will always do what's best for that patient, and it's not about getting him back quick enough. I don't need to worry about that, that's your job. My job is to get this person back to the best of their ability. And that, that speaks volumes. And right. that's exact. Dr. Elitrosh is a great example, but he's, he was, he's not the only doc that's like that. All the docs I've ever been with are like that, you know? That's awesome. Have you, have you ever had that experience, Frost, going for a second or third opinion? Or have you usually trust? Yeah, yeah. I've always no. got a second or third opinion. It's been Dr. Nima, yeah. a couple of them, you know, just asking him, hey, right. man, check this out. You know, I'll just send my film to him because I know he's going to cut it straight. And like you said, it's always about, you know, your reinsurance of having a couple of extra eyes on it. You know, because so if Dr. Nima gets it, you know, what I mean, he might be showing a colleague it and, you know, that's two, four, six, you know, different eyes that are seeing it. So I'm getting more of not just a second opinion or a third one. I'm getting a sixth opinion, yeah. you know, yeah. and um, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that chances because your career is everything. At that yeah. point, when you get hurt, everything flashes before your eyes. Like, what am I going to do? You know, I got a family. I got this. It's everything that just comes right into this, uh, you know. It comes right into your face and you're just sitting here. I got to make hard decisions. So let me get through my phone and make sure I don't just leave it on my agent. I can do it too. I've yeah. met people. I know people that I trust. And like, like I said, I called him because I trust him with everything I got. Yeah. You know, Actually, I, I, hope, Frost, I hope you understand that. You know? <laughs> no, no. That means the world to me. Frost, a lot of athletes don't know this, but um, a lot of doctors, you nailed it. They actually – if it's not a clear cut case, black and white, where it's everyone knows most like 90% of doctors will agree with the treatment. Mm -hmm. We take that, that film, we sit down with multiple colleagues and we go, yo, what would you do here? Hey, so-and-so, what would you do in this case? And we talk to three or four people when it's a complex case to try to come up with the best decision for that athlete. Because 
you really care about these people and your name is on that knee. Your name is on that hip. You know, you got to make sure you do what's right for them because everybody, you know, hindsight's always 2020 and everybody's an expert when they look back and something goes wrong. Like with Kevin Durant, right? Yeah. Everyone was an expert. Yeah. Right. Max Kellerman was an expert telling you what Dr. Should have been doing. <laughs> right. <Of> course, right? <laughs> you know, it, it really is refreshing though, Frosty said it, to hear that in the sports world and not to get too personal, but like my, my daughter had heart surgery this, this week. And there was some complications oh, wow. after the surgery. And so they, you know, for the last two days have been, we were at Children's Hospital and they've actually out, not outsourced, but called other doctors from all over to get second opinions, third opinions, fourth opinions about what to do about these complications. And so they did that. And you expect that when you're, you know, a civilian, you know, you hear as a civilian, as a fan, some of these athlete stories and, you know, the whole thing with concussions and whether people are ignoring it. So it's good to hear that the sports world is, is still similar. Like, hey, we're caring about the patient, what's best for them. This isn't about just their contract or the, the owner's dollars. We want to put this person's, not only their career, but their life moving forward the best possible. So it's good hearing that. Love it. Actually, when something goes wrong, it's not because people didn't care or didn't try their, you know, their tail off to make it perfect. It's just because we're human. And no. the bottom line is at the end of the day, we're going to keep making mistakes and learning from it. And medicine is going to keep improving over decades. You know, think about where we are now yeah. from where we were a hundred years ago. Right. It's unreal. What you guys he said. It. He said it, you know, and uh, I, I'm a true testament to that because I, you know, I've been through some stuff and you really have to trust and uh, let these guys be professional. And you also have to let them be hum uh, human, you know, um, because you might not get the, uh, you might not bounce back the way they said, you know, oh, four to six weeks, right? It may take you a little longer. You know, you may recover a different, different way, different speed. Um, different treatments didn't work for you as they worked for the last 50 people they've, they've treated. So they have to come back, give you a new new ingredients and stuff to make your, you know, your meal the, the right way. And um, I'm fortunate that for, for the, the most part of my career, I've had great guidance when it came to, you know, my health. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, Dr. Nima, last thing on this meniscus, and I, I'd love to hear about your background and history and you and Frost can go back and forth and, and tell stories and stuff, but just for our <laughs> listeners out there to feel good about Derwin and Traven Howard after this. So last thing with this meniscus tear, with the full repair that for sure Derwin did, he already had surgery. He's out for the full season, six months, as you kind of alluded to, is this an injury? Cause he's starting to get that moniker, unfortunately injury prone as a lot of athletes get, but in your opinion, not knowing the case at all, but is this an injury yeah. that he can come back from and still be fully productive and, and play at an all pro level if he puts in the work in the off season? Yeah, there's, so there's, I don't know for sure if he had the repair of the partial meniscectomy. I think we don't know that hundred percent, mm -hmm. but there's some the good data in terms of when we've looked back at athletes through uh, internet data, where we kind of track, all the athletes and what injuries they've had in the NFL and the NBA, that they actually come back after meniscus injuries and have similar success rates to prior to their meniscus injury in terms of their, um, their performance stats. Uh, so that's all we can do. Now, that, is that data truly great? No, mm -hmm. because, you know, they may have also, they're, uh, you know, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Some of these guys could just be getting stronger and faster also, which may be helping them out. We don't know for sure. So, but we don't, we don't have access to all, you know, all their actual, uh, the NFL data to say, hey, before and after for the last 20 years, we watch athletes and we measured them before they got injured and we were measuring them after, have that kind of data. We just have this retrospective data when we go on the internet. We, because on the internet, we know everybody who has had a meniscus tear. We mm -hmm. can find that information out and then we just compare their stats before and after the surgery. We see that in those type of studies that the majority of athletes have similar. Oh, that's too hard though. But that, 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 <laughs> that is too hard because you get new defensive coordinators. You get all I know, this. I, I know. It. It's know? Yeah, it's convoluted. It's, it's right. there's too many confounding variables, but that's too all many. we have. That's the best, that's the best to our, you know, to our knowledge at this point. We don't make anything else. I'll give yeah. you that part. But I was, I was just sitting there like, that is too tough to, you know, judge a player off, you I know, know, post and, you know, injury and, and whatnot, just because of simple facts, you get coaches changing, you know, you got playtime incentives that keep you off the field, you know, mm -hmm. there's so many variables, like you said. Just, and also just, if you just look at age, strength, and speed, you can think about what Frosty Rucker was at 19 to what Frosty Rucker was at 25. I remember one time Frosty and I were having lunch at South Coast Plaza. And this was a time when everybody in the world was talking about, could, US, could USC football beat Miami? Mm -hmm. because USC was so dominant. And I turned to Frost, and it was on ESPN, right? I go, Frost, be honest with me. 
can you guys beat Miami? You think you guys are pretty good. And he goes, Nima, are you serious? Those are grown ass men. <laughs> they have man strength. So and it's true. Like he was, he legitimately, he legitimately put a point in it out. Yeah. In that five year, four year period, an athlete grows so much. To, so to say that they had a meniscus tear at 21 and, and 19 and 20, they performed a certain way, but at 23 and 24, they performed a different way. Well, you got to add that age, strength, and experience too. It's hard. Exactly. It's, it's, it's not good information. Yeah. It's something, something to go off. It's least. something. It's all we have. <laughs> yeah. It's all we got. All you can work with. So, so Frost, I think what you said it best though, I think, well, I mean, Derwin knows his body better, but lose a little weight, maybe trim yeah, down a little bit. Get back in the lab and figure out, okay, yeah. if I have too much body mass or, you know, weight or whatnot, muscle, maybe I have to trim here, run a little bit more, eat a little bit more, hydrate a little bit. I don't know what it is, but he's got to figure it out because yeah. injuries like that, like you said, he can come back from, um, but the true testament is going to be, what did you do to do something different? That's what, yeah. that's where they're going to want to know. Obviously you're going to run and live and jump, but yeah. what treatments did you do? Did you start working on your, uh, getting more stretched and yoga and, you know, acupuncture, you know, what, what are you doing that's different that you didn't do before to loosen up yourself a little bit more? So. And we'll some just dumb luck too, unfortunately. Sports. Yeah. And he's an all pro. So he's got all access to everything mm -hmm. and yeah, I'm sure the support behind the team behind him, he should be fine. Yeah. Absolutely. So, well, Frost, I'm curious, how'd you guys meet? I'd love to hear about your story and Dr. Neem a little bit about your history. So, me and Doc were actually colleagues and uh, friends at USC. Um, colleagues at USC? Yeah, we were colleagues. <laughs> you know, we're colleagues. Not all we're, grown, we're grown now. So. Yeah. <laughs> He's, He's right. We're colleagues. Right, yeah. right? So, so yeah. shooters at the bar. Go ahead. And um, uh, I met a couple of those guys there. They become, you know, lifelong friends with me. Um, you know, that, that's pretty much it. We, we hung out for like three straight years, uh, pretty much seen them like every day of college. And, you know, we weren't in the same classes, obviously, but, you know, we were always around the same, um, the same area, same common spaces. and Social circles. There's the <laughs> word. Yeah. And, um, you know what I mean? And we, we, we hung out a lot and we just grown, our friendship's grown over the years. And, you know, as his career has taken off and he's been in, you know, I, Disclaimer, he, you know, he worked for the Lakers for a little bit, right? Or yeah. you do? Yeah, I did. I did, yeah. not anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he did for a little bit. And um, as his career just kept going, mine kept going, and we just kept, you know, collaborating and talking. And anytime something would come up and, you know, I didn't feel right, I would send Phil's to him as well as, you know, other famous doctors out there. But I'd rather have his eyes on him too, you know, just because I know he cares about me from the root of me. He, you yeah. know, we go back. We're Trojans. Love it. 100%. Trojan Frost. family. That, that lives strong. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm jealous. Frost, you didn't have any uh, anatomy classes as a SOS major? <laughs> <laughs> that, was the, that was the graduate program. So, Doc, how'd you get into medicine? Was it always, is it family business or is it just something that fascinated you and got into it at USC? No, actually, uh, nobody in my family is a doctor. Um, you know, Frost is going to laugh. I, if you would ask me from the ages of seven to probably even 21, you had to convince me I, I still wasn't going to the NBA. <laughs> right, True right, statement. Frost? True statement. <laughs> Always laced up, ready to go. We're ready to play ball. But um, so my, my whole thing was, if I can't be a pro basketball player, what's the second best thing is taking care of pro athletes, mm -hmm. getting them the chance, getting them second chances. And so I always wanted to be a, you know, a, a doc in sports medicine doc. And then uh, went to med school in Chicago and then did residency in Michigan. Uh, in Detroit, and then came back to Curl and Job. And that's where I did my sports fellowship training. Um, and now I'm in LA and just still doing sports medicine stuff, man. So I love it. That's great. It's such a hard profession and takes so much dedication to, to do and be good at. And you've worked for a number of different teams, right? I'm looking at your Instagram. You got what, Lakers, Kings, Dodgers, SC? Is that, that the gamut or yeah. do you got more than that even? No, no. So that's all with Curl and Job, right? So that's, okay. that's the way it works with medicine is you basically you get involved with the right mentors and that's where you do your training and that's what opens those doors up and so when i was at curl and joe you know that's the mecca of sports medicine and they they really uh dr elatrosh dr lombardo karazi these guys the lakers team docs the, the dodgers the kings dr Kavitney, those were all my mentors so i spent 2015 and 16 with them doing that stuff and that's what opens those doors that's great yeah oh, man just phenomenal you know piece of work so Obviously, we're, we're Laker fans. I see the jersey behind you. Yeah. Uh, right now, I do have a Black Panther shirt on, but usually it's something Lakers. Um, you know, Kobe, obviously, rest in peace. You know, we were all missing yeah. Kobe. You know, 
Um, any stories, any, anything like that? Any, any quote that he ever gave you? You ever sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one with you? Anything you share with our followers? Yeah, man. So actually my experiences with Kobe, there was really, I had five or six experiences with him that were, that were more personal. And the reason was, was before games, we had to be at work an hour early. Um, and as, and as Frosty knows, when you're, when you're, you know, go to USC and you're in LA, you're not very starstruck. Like there aren't very many people like that make me starstruck, but Kobe, the first time I went into the, the locker room, I was starstruck. That was Kobe Bryant. You know, there's a handful right. of people that can do that to me. And, um, I basically were supposed to show up an hour early. When I got off work, I was there two, two and a half hours early. Cause if I'm at, if I have a chance to be in that training room and get more, more exposure to Kobe Bryant, I was going to take that opportunity. So I, I would go to the training room early and I talked with Gary Vitti and Kobe Bryant. And basically I got the opportunity to listen to all the stories that Kobe would tell about different athletes and his experiences and the jokes and all, all the inside jokes. I was a part of all that. What blew me away about Kobe was a lot of athletes, a lot of, I, you know, you hear these rumors that, you know, Kobe's not, not coachable. Or Kobe's not easy to play with and things like that. And I, I started to believe that because I had friends that were maybe, that, that had experiences playing with Kobe and saying he's hard to play with. And so I thought to myself, wow, this guy maybe is just not, he's kind of a jerk to other players. That's what I actually started thinking too. So when I met him, I was kind of going in there, keep my eyes open, trying to figure out what's really going on. Is Kobe a nice guy or a mean guy? Dude, this guy is a stand-up. It was never about him being a jerk to people. It was him getting the best out of anyone. And he, all he wanted to see, you know, you remember Ronnie Turiaf? He wasn't the best player. But well, the bottom line was Kobe loved him. Why did he love he had him? Energy. 110% all the time. Mm -hmm. Kobe didn't care if you missed your jump shots or missed your layups. He didn't care about any of that. He just cared that you were always trying to better yourself. You were going to dedicate yourself to your craft, no matter what it was. It was me being a doctor, you know, to the therapist being a therapist, R Ruck being a, a football player, or him being a basketball player. You wanted to know you were going to go out there and you were going to give it everything and you were going to give 110% of your effort and you were ever going to give in. And if you fought like that, he respected you and he loved you. But if you didn't want to learn, if you didn't want to read, if you didn't want to get better, if you, were, if you weren't smart and if you didn't try, he had no interest in getting to know you and he wanted you gone. He just didn't want to deal with that. He, mm -hmm. he couldn't understand you. And when I saw that side of him by the way he talked to others and the way he treated others, and I saw how he treated me and got to know me as a doctor and the encouragement he gave me or other people around him, the way he was with, with Gary Vee. Gary Vee was his best friend. And that was because Gary Vee was a smart guy who was energetic and in it. When I saw that stuff, I was like, dude, this dude is just for real. He's misunderstood. Right. Yeah. People don't get him. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot He's of people, that, they, they can't keep up with that tempo, you know, and we all know about Mamba mentality. And, yeah. you know, like I said, when he passed, that crushed a whole nation of people. Obviously, everyone that grew up with him in Southern California, like myself, obviously, we were in school during, you know, when they were making their run and we were making ours and we were the hottest thing since, you know, French toast. I like French toast. Yeah. So it's just good. <laughs> it is good, you know, certain times. But um, uh, it just to be in that environment, I've never been around him. And, and I know you have the opportunity to do that. That's why I really asked. And, you know, I wanted you to bless our followers with that. Just, you know, we're, we're a L.A. football-based show, but Kobe's greatness need to be sprinkled yeah. in our, you know. Still L.A. It's still yeah, L.A. it's still yeah. L.A. And, they, you know, Kobe, rest in peace. That's all yeah. I can say. You know, as corny as it is for us, I was a childhood, I was a kid when I got into that locker room who had a dream of being a team doctor with the Lakers one day. And I was an assistant, you know, I was a fellow and I go in there and to meet him and to see him for, and realize what he really was and how he behaved. And, you know, I, I was at a Kings game with one of my best friends. He was in town and I was covering the Kings game. Kobe was three, two or three sections over and he saw me. My friend goes, would he even know you or recognize you? And I'm like, yeah, he'd recognize me. I go, he just calls me Doc, so he probably doesn't even know my name. <laughs> and my buddy goes, you think he'll say hi? Well, Kobe sees me, he waves, and then we actually ended up being in the tunnel together. He calls me over to introduce me to his wife at the time, you know, your wife, Vanessa. And yeah. then um, I introduces himself to my buddy, shakes his hand and gives me like a hug, puts his arm around me. And I was like, damn, what a real dude to take yeah. the time to say hello to me like that. Make me look good in front of my friend. Right. You know, that's just, it was a yeah. real, loved him for it, just man. Just a stand up dude, man. Stand up and dude. That's what it's all about. When you're an athlete and you get that status, but when you can be humble because especially he respected you because of the way you went around your craft and that's what made, you know, it, him really notice you. And that's why you were around, you know, and yeah. he embraced you like that. And that says a lot, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Proud that. of you, man. I'm proud of you. Well, I'm, I'm proud of you, man. 
You you were a legend. You knew Kobe. I'm proud of you. <laughs> you mean I met Kobe? You can't say okay. I knew him, right? <laughs> you got a hug. You knew you. Yeah, I'll you knew take you. A, a couple I'll, handshakes. I'll take a day. Uh, I would take a point in the crowd. Like, yeah, I would take that away. too. I'd You're my boy. That. That one yeah. of those. Uh, I love it. I love it. Well, Doc, what are you up to now? Are you still at a different organization now or what are you, are you doing? No, practice? no, no teams now. Just doing my thing, doing sports medicine, taking care of all the athletes that I see, high school, college, some of these semi-pro athletes, you know, whoever comes into the, kind of the clinic, you know? Yeah. Um, and then just kind of see where it goes. You never know where it's going to go or where life's going to take me and just bless to do what I do, man. Every time I, you know, you guys kind of, uh, when you talked about your daughter, and it really made me think about this, something I want to I say about Doc's is we're so lucky when we have a good outcome and a good experience and the patients or athletes do well, but I don't know the names of every athlete that I've ever operated on. That's doing great now where they are. I don't know them all, mm -hmm. but I know the name of every single athlete who's had a complication, every single patient who's had a complication. I've lost hours of sleep over them because we care so much about that stuff. So just know that there's a lot of doctors out there that are thinking about your daughter every single night. They can't sleep. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope I wish her the best, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's good hearing Zed and you guys are heroes, man. I love it. I mean, we, we've been in and out of hospitals since she was born in March. She was diagnosed when she was still uh, in the womb. So since January, so we basically, we basically lived at the hospital during a pandemic for other reasons, yeah. but uh, there, you know, you guys are all heroes, what you do and, and what they've done for her and what you've done for countless athletes, letting them continue to live their dream and their career. So, so thank you. And thank you for coming on and sharing some insight because it's fascinating well, to me. Something I could anytime, never do, man. but I love it. <laughs> Anytime, Appreciate man. Appreciate you, Neela. Yeah. Anytime, Rock. I'd do anything for you. I know. Likewise, man. La last question for me, and then we'll let you go. I don't know if Frost yeah. anything else. But I, this is more just out of curiosity. Watching those little clips you sent us, and we, we have them on the video there, how long did it take you, or were you from the beginning, where you weren't, like, squeamish going into someone's bone? And I just see that. And I'm like, oh, how can anyone actually do that? Was that always normal for you, or did it take some yeah. time to really get What's used to it? What's the gut check? What, yeah. What yeah. Happen? yeah. Actually, secret, just so you know. I hate needles. I can barely have my blood drawn. Oh, man. Of course. <laughs> but you can do all that. <laughs> oh. No, I'm totally getting nervous about that stuff. And, you know, when we go to anatomy the first week of med school, consistently, probably any med school across the country, at least one kid falls. One kid passes out and faints. I believe it. I was always a little bit weirded out by blood and all that stuff, the guts, that kind of stuff. But over time, and you just did exposure, you flooded it. You know, you flood it out, man. You just got to stick with just it. Performing, and now man. it's, yeah, it's performing. It's just rising above. Love it. Well, good. good. Well, hey, man. I'm proud of you stopping by. I know this is LA football podcast, but you know, you you, you talked, you touched on Kobe, you touched on some greatness, and uh, thank you for blessing us with uh, your presence today, Doc. Dude, anytime you want me, I'm here, boys. Yeah, he said it. you heard him, Ryan. That's right. <laughs> well, Abby, you're going to be our resident doctor on the show, so I appreciate it. I'm cool with that. <laughs> Just let them listen to my voice. Don't show them this ugly mug. <laughs> nope. You look great. Yeah. Well, well, hey, man, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. It's been great meeting you. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. You know, it's always good to get a, a doctor on here or someone that is very familiar. You know, I, I told you offline that, you know, Doc was really normal and a cool guy. And um, I hope he proved that to you today. Dude, awesome guy. You know, take nothing at all away from the doctors that I've usually been around, but they're kind of socially awkward. They're like, right. they can't really talk to you at all. Like when me and my wife meet with them, it's like, they like say something super scientific and then just like pause. I'm like, am I supposed to answer you or what? And he's, you know, this guy you just can sit down and have a beer with, talk about anything. Yeah. I mean, he's great, man. We went to college, like I said, and um, we're, we're good friends, man, for, for many years and our, our friendship just kept growing and he's just kept doing great things. And he's with the Lakers and the Kings and doing all this great stuff. And I'm just fortunate that we can get him on. Absolutely. So hopefully that'll be our resident doctor, Dr. Nima Meron. Since, uh, yeah. I got the last name right. Um, but yeah, a lot of fun. So hopefully we won't have to report on too many injuries this season, but if we do, we'll get Doc back on to uh, break it down for us. What's up, LA football fans? Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the LA football podcast on the Believe Podcast Network. Hope you enjoyed that episode with myself and of course, Frosty Rucker. Great guest, Dr. Nima Meron. Uh, had a blast talking to him and getting a little inside look of what goes into uh, repairing some of these injuries. Hope it was informative for you and we'll make sure to have him back as we said. But make sure to subscribe to the show wherever you listen to podcasts. We are everywhere you listen. Also on video, on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. So check that out. Subscribe. Hit us up. 
Love to hear from you. I'm on Twitter at Ryan Dyard, LAFB. The main account is LAFB Network. Or you can have Frosty at The Organic Frost on all social channels or email him at frostypodcast at yahoo.com. Hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. We'll be getting into roster cuts next week. All of those are finalized for the Rams and Chargers, so Frost and I will break that down. Along with our second episode of the week, we'll be getting into our previews for the Chargers, Bengals, and Rams, Cowboys, as football is finally back. It is upon us. We will have live football less than a week from the time you are listening to this, listening to my voice right now. Can't wait. Thanks so much. Stay healthy, stay safe. We'll talk to you guys in a few days.